In this video we're going to look at using RhinoCam to set up some machining operations for flip milling. So you see this part that I have here in green and on a three axis CNC machine there would be no way to mill this in one machining process or simply there would be no way to mill it without flip milling. So we're going to go ahead and use RhinoCam to set up some operations that allow, the, allow us to mill this on a three axis CNC machine. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this to the clipboard and open up a new file. So since our piece is relatively small, it's smaller than a truck, we're going to use small objects inches for our template. And we're going to work primarily in the perspective view, in the 3D view. I'm going to go ahead and make this grid a little easier on our eyes. So I'm going to use the shortcut DOC for document properties. And I'm going to go ahead and set up our grid so that we have 20 lines, minor grid lines every inch, and four line or major lines every four minor. So every four inches will have uh, a major grid line. Now the CNC machine in the College of Architecture at IIT, it's a four foot by eight foot machine, has a four foot by eight foot bed, and the X axis is the long axis, the eight foot axis. So I'm gonna set up my screen so that I'm standing in the lower right hand corner of this CNC machine. And I'm gonna go ahead and paste in my part Okay, so the first thing I need to set up is my stock size. So this is a relatively small part. I can set up a rectangle that's 12 inches along the X and 6 inches in the Y. So I'm just going to go ahead and type in rectangle. And my first corner of the rectangle will be 0, 0, 0. And my other corner will be 12 inches my, along the X axis, comma 6 in the Y. So there's my rectangle. Now the next thing I want to set up is the height of my stock. So this is being used for prototyping, not the final product. So we're going to be prototyping out of inch and a half foam material. So I need to copy this rectangle vertically or, or down, but I'm going to set vertically equal or vertical equal to yes. And I'm going to pick my base point and I'm going to copy it down one and a half inches so I'm gonna put negative 1.5 enter that copied it so I can just hit escape so now when I open up RhinoCam it's gonna find these bounding rectangles and set the stock automatically to them so I'll go ahead and open up the machining operations browser and I'll deselect that rectangle so first thing is set up the stock I'm gonna go ahead and double click on the yellow stock box and you see it's made the stock for me um, for some reason the Y is not at zero so let's take a look at that so this is showing the corner coordinates of the bottom of my stock bottom left hand corner so that's this corner so I want that to be zero zero and negative 1.5 and I want the size of that box to be 12 by 6 okay if I double click on that again I can see that box now I'm not seeing the stock box in the Rhino viewport but if I go ahead and click on stock visibility I can turn that box on and off so I'm going to go ahead and leave that on. Now in RhinoCam for flip milling we're going to be looking at two setups. A setup one for the top and one for the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and rename this setup just by right clicking on it. Rename. This is going to be setup top. And I'm going to need two work zeros and we'll see that in a little bit. 
So I'm going to set up my first work zero by clicking on work zero. And by default, this work zero is zero, 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 X, Y, Z, zero, zero, zero. And that's fine. Okay, so we have the work zero set. And now I'm going to set up my machining operations, which is going to be a three axis. And since it's a contoured part, I'm going to use parallel finishing. Now I don't have to select anything for the drive containment region. It's going to automatically find um, just the surfaces, just the 3D objects. The next thing I should set up is my tool. <clears throat> so I'll go to Edit, Create, Select Tool. So again, we're milling foam, so a ball mill is best for that. The tool diameter is 3 eighths. So I'm going to enter in uh, decimals 0.375 for the tool diameter. The length of the tool is 4 inches. The shoulder length, which is shown here in the diagram, that's going to be 3.5 inches. And then the flute length, the part that's actually cutting the foam, is going to be 3 inches. The shank diameter can be the same as the tool diameter. And these holder diameter and holder length values are fine. Now since I'm going to use this tool twice in two operations, I'm going to go ahead and set up the feeds and speeds as part of the tool. So I'll set the speed of my spindle to be 15,000 RPM. And I'm going to set up my plunge, approach, and engage. I'm going to set those all to 150 inches per minute. and my cut, retract, and departure, I'm going to set that to 300 inches per minute. And again, this is for milling and foam. You can go relatively fast through the foam. And I'm going to click on Save Edits to Tool. And my ball mill shows up. Now, my feeds and speeds are already set. We set that within the tool. So now when I move to this top row, of settings, when I click on entry exit, everything on the top is going to come down to the bottom. So I'll click on entry and exit. I can leave that as the default. Now my Z containment, this is where I'm going to specify the top half of the part that I'm going to mill. And I'm going to do that by telling it to only go down a certain distance. So I'm going to click on specify lowest Z and I'm going to pick it on the screen. I already have a black guideline drawn here. So I can click that and I can pick that Z containment. And you see now it's showing me in red how far down the top milling process is going. Next I can move on to my cut parameters. And for my step over, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and use distance for my step over. So these, these blue tooling lines here are going to be spaced 1 8 inch apart. Um, it's not great resolution. Uh, it's not going to be very fine. It's going to be a little bit rough. But again, we're prototyping. So um, we just want to get a feel for our, what our part looks like, see if everything's working, and get this flip milling process, um, get it down pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and go to my next option which is clearance plane and I want to set my clearance plane to be my part max plus a Z distance that I can specify and in this case it's a quarter inch so when the machine is moving up and down in the Z direction it's staying quite close to the part a quarter inch away um, so it's not having to go up higher to the stock and then add a quarter inch so this is a, a more optimized process it's a little quicker so I'll go ahead and click on Generate. And it generates my tooling lines for me. Go ahead and change this to Shaded. So I'm going to run my tooling. I'm going to run it along the curved direction, the short direction of this part, not the long direction. So I can go ahead and set that through the parallel finishing. So I can double click on parallel finishing and under cut parameters I can tell it the angle of cuts here so instead of zero 
I'm going to set this to 90 and I'll go ahead and generate that. Okay, so that looks pretty good. And I can go ahead now and simulate. Clicking on simulate and pressing the play. Okay, that looks pretty good. So now we can go ahead and set up our bottom operation. So for making a new setup, I'm going to right click on setup top and I'm going to choose new setup. And for now, I'm going to accept the default setup orientation. We're going to come back and change this in a bit. So I'm going to right click and rename this setup. I'm going to call this setup bottom. And I'm going to go ahead and set the work zero, which is under the program tab. Work zero. And I'm going to go ahead and pick this. I'm not going to leave it at zero, zero, zero. I'm going to pick it. And it's going to be this bottom right hand corner. Okay, eventually you'll see we're going to be foot milling this. So this, when I rotate 180 degrees along this x-axis, this is, en is going to end up being this corner. The zero, zero, zero corner. So I will click on generate. And I can use the same parallel finishing operation. I can go ahead and click on it, right click and choose copy. And then I can paste it now I need to flip this so that the Z direction is pointing down again so when I rotate it and just to show you how I'm going to rotate this on the CNC I can do a rotate 3D turn off my ortho so you can see this a little better so this is how I'm going to rotate the part. After the first CNC pass is finished, I will take the foam that's on the CNC bed and I'm going to rotate it 180 degrees. So to begin with, this z-axis in the lower right where my cursor is, to begin with, that should be pointing down so that when I rotate my part, when I'm seeing seeing the z-axis will be pointing upward so to rotate that work zero I need to do that in the setup so I'm gonna double click on the setup bottom and I'm gonna be rotating 180 degrees and I'm not rotating about the x-axis I'm actually rotating the x-axis and this will be uh, this will make Z point down. So I'm going to click X-axis, click OK. Now when I click back on my work zero, I'm going to see Z is pointing down. So that's what I want. So for my parallel finishing, which you see when I generated it, it was still doing the top setup. It was not milling out the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and parallel finishing, go back to Z containment, make sure specify Lower Z is set. Might even reset that. Put my object snap back on. Just kind of double checking it. Click generate. So now you see it's milling the bottom. So I have a parallel finishing for my top, which I should go ahead and rename. And I have a parallel finishing for my bottom, which I'll rename that to bottom. and I can go ahead and simulate the bottom so of course it's showing it from the underside but in reality this piece will be uh, milling from above because we will flip the stock over after we mill the top so in terms of outputting these or posting these files to open up and mill I'm gonna 
post them as two separate files one one for the top and one for the bottom so it's really a matter of knowing what post file um, or what CNC machine you're using and at the College of Architecture at IIT um, we have a pre-6 3-axis router but it uses a software um, called FlashCut so we're going to want to post to FlashCut so to make sure you're posting to the right file you double click on that post icon and you want to make sure you're using um, for our machine a flash cut pre six um, inch file so that can be located anywhere as long as you tell it here where to browse for that file so that's pretty much it for foot milling Thanks.